If I told you that more than half of Netflix's users watch anime, would you believe me? The head of Netflix anime has said that roughly 222 million of its global users watch anime. And that's crazy. With anime becoming more mainstream and accessible and Netflix having a lot of shows on its platform, you need somebody to tell you what's worth watching and what's worth your time and attention. So here I present to you the perfect Netflix anime original recommendation guide. Yeah, anime exclusively that you can only find streaming on Netflix. If you'd like another platform, let me know. Blue Eye Samurai. In the wise words of Spike Spiegel, I, I love, love a woman, woman who can kick, kick my, my ass. ass. The Oxford study in a samurai show. The animation is just stunning. You eat it up with every episode. I'd even say it's part of a balanced breakfast. It's good protein. It's 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 good for you. You you feel good watching the show. Hear me out. Take Game of Thrones and Mamma Mia and put it into a blender and you have a brutal samurai anime. If you worked on this show, you are the reason why I toss and turn at night. I can't stop thinking about it. I adored it. It's severely underrated, and that's why it's first on this list. Doro Hidoro. Probably the best fever dream you can have. It has an extremely unique dark fantasy art style, a lizard man, really, really cool character designs. Story-wise, it's just a really, really weird cooking anime in the best way. On God, it will 100% make you want to pick up the manga right after. The villains are just electric in Doro Hidoro. Honestly, it's a big show for people who wear graphic tees and think that tall women are the cure to depression. Shout out to women. The Way of the Household Husband. It's an addicting fun watch and is like the equivalent of having an inside joke with your best friend that never gets old. I think Way of the Household Husband cured my AD or like it attempted to. I honestly stopped going to therapy because it was all I needed. I'm kidding, go to therapy, but it's about a badass Yakuza boss who decides to just become a household husband to clean and cook for his wife with the same aggressive, ruthless determination that a mafia boss leader would have. The episodes are incredibly funny. It's a snake eating itself. It's basically the same joke over and over again but you really like the joke. It's honestly art. It's incredible. You know what else is incredible? Games. Did you know that you can play games on Netflix now? Yeah. I was surprised too. If you have a Netflix account, not only do you get an endless collection of TV shows and movies, but you also unlock a whole collection of games. And today I'm also going to recommend a game for you on Netflix, Cozy Grove Camp Spirit. It has a wonderfully gentle, almost haunting, but really comforting atmosphere to it. And the weird haunting vibes just make it so much better. This is the second game in the Cozy Grove series, but it's a brand new heartwarming story. So in this game, you play as a spirit scout who wakes up on this mysterious island after your bus crashes. You're greeted by a friendly fire named Flamey and a lost spirit bear scout. And your job is to bring peace to the island's ghost while unraveling the mystery of what happened to the other scouts and to the bus. It's really the perfect game for brain off unwinding. I play it before bed, I play it to relax on walks. It's a game that's like the personification of like a warm fuzzy blanket. There's no rush into finishing this game, it's just doing the calming tasks of fishing, gardening, exploring a magical forest. You can even team up with your friends that also play this game and send each other gifts to brighten up each other's islands. Your mission is to make Flamey's fire burn brighter, expand your camp. As you help these spirits and nurture the island, it becomes more colorful, vibrant. It really feels like you're breathing life into this game in the most magical way. Just look how beautiful it is. Listen to the sounds. It, it's so good. It's so good. So if you've been searching for a game that feels like a warm hug, you have to play Cozy Grove Camp Spirit. And remember, you can find this game along with almost a hundred other ones on the Netflix app on iOS and Android. A huge incredible thank you to Netflix and Cozy Grove Camp Spirit for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Before we get back into it, I need to ask, what is your gender? Is it gamer? Because then I have the perfect show for you. High Score Girl. We're turning back the clock with an anime that takes place in the 90s. It's a 
romantic comedy that's all about arcade culture. The romance here is just so goofy and these are dumb nerds acting like dumb nerds. What this show gives you, I don't know, it's immaculate. It's about a boy who lives and breathes games, somebody who believes that he's the hottest thing around getting all the high scores in Street Fighter 2, and then a girl comes up and kicks his ass. And he hates that. I don't know, if you love video games, like especially fighting games, like it like they actually use Street Fighter 2 in the anime, and like you I learned a lot about it. It's just a fun, unique watch. You can tell the person who made it, like this is a love letter to the arcade experience. It balances the romance really sweetly, and I don't know, I love it. Romantic killer. I'm sorry, it's another romance anime, okay? You either love hating them or you hate how much you love them, and honestly, maybe you're the secret third option. We'll call that unloved. Just, if you want your heart warmed, if you want your cheeks to hurt from smiling so much, this is your show. It's a romance where love is the main thing, but it's not just romantic love. There's a plot twist in this show that's pretty crazy, and if you love love, you will just be eating so good with this show. It's a quirky romance, it's cooked up, it's a little goaded with the sauce, you get it. Great Pretender. Okay, think of the best heist comedy that you've ever seen and throw that away because Great Pretender is infinitely better. The colors are vibrant, the cinematography is crispy and unique, and the amount of culture there is in this show? Like actual culture, I'm not kidding. There are a bunch of languages in this show that honestly feels so incredible and unique to watch and really, I don't know, it just makes you love the details that were put into this show even more. It's just a good time, especially with the found family. Like, just Think of this show as basically Cowboy Bebop meets Ocean's Eleven meets Breaking Bad. Yeah. Great Pretender, I hardly know her. Pluto. I did not expect this show to like alter my brain chemistry. It's a sci-fi murder mystery thriller. It's kind of a slow burn, but it's so interesting because of how current it feels. It talks about robots burdened with memories. I teared up watching it. The music goes crazy. Think Blade Runner. Think Ex Machina. Think people who play dry bones in Mario Party. Pluto is just a ride and is so haunting, but that's to be expected because it's made by the same guy who wrote Monster, the anime and manga with the most vile villain of all time. So I say get on it. Arcane. It's only eight episodes, but you're going to want to non-stop talk about it right after. It has an insane amount of detail and care and depth for a League of Legends video game adaptation. I just love the writing to the show so much, you might need the three episode rule with it, but watching a character's descent into madness is so hypnotizing. It's compelling even. Also, season two is coming out in like a few weeks, so if there's a time to watch it, it's now. You know what's cooler than robots, a heist show, a lizard man, samurais even, League of Legends? What's cooler than those things? a healthy relationship, and that's found in my happy marriage. It's genuinely wholesome, and sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that type of watch. It literally breaks your heart in the most beautiful way. If you like Fruits Basket, think of this as like a more mature version of it with all the drama there is, but like, cause it's like mature, maybe vegetable basket? Yeah, I think I'm going with that description. Beastars. This story was written and made by the daughter of the guy who wrote Grappler Baki. This series is also insane. Don't let the Zootopia anthropomorphic vibe steer you away. Actually embrace it. Put those ears on. I know you want to. I'm kidding, I'm getting carried away. It's just, this world is so unique and lived in. It's a mystery action romance that will make you question things about society and yourself. You think about where. There is genuinely so much to love about this show. I'd say it's a Netflix anime original classic. Like, if you've seen it, 
you're going to want to recommend it to other people. That's a guarantee, genuinely, it's so good. Little Witch Academia. Oh, you think Little Witch Academia is for babies? You think Communist Harry Potter is for babies? Honestly, it's a feel-good, cute show that's just a breath of fresh air amongst other like heavy shows on this list. It's also made by Studio Trigger. If that means anything to you, it definitely means something to me. This show makes me just want to be a witch wearing a little witch hat with little witch clothes doing some little witch magic and I think that's great. Violet Evergarden. One of the most beautiful shows to just experience, period. It's honestly a show that you just gotta watch in your feels. It hits different. It delves into the question on what does I love you mean? It teaches you about true empathy. You might feel like a victim to the weight of this show in the best way. Think of Violet Evergarden as like an anvil that's falling slowly onto your delicate, beautiful, fragile head, but you like it. Dungeon Meshi. Not to be the anime expert over here, but this show slaps. This is for anybody who wants a good-ass fantasy show. It has the perfect amount of adventure, comedy, character dynamics. It starts off so silly and light, and then as you go deeper into the dungeon, deeper into the story, you there's some weird, eerie feelings that you get. There's something more here. And even with that aspect, I'd say this show is a compelling argument for world peace. Not to praise Dungeon Meshi too much. Every year, I feel like there's an anime that's kind of like tear bait. It's an edgy, jaded piece of art. It has evocative writing that talks about the human condition, like you'd think Berserk, Vinland Saga, or on High School Host Club, Kotaro Lives Alone. You look at the poster of this show and you think it's a slice of life comedy, which it is, but you also might cry every episode. This anime was described to me as the pleading eyes emoji personified. If you like Spy Fan, you would probably like this show. I honestly just felt very whole and fulfilled when I finished it. Brain off good show, this is that. Cyberpunk Edgerunners just captures your attention within the first five minutes. It oozes style, the colors, the soundtrack, the personality. It's an anime that sends electricity through your bones. Quotes, symbolism, stay with me even past the watch. Night City and its characters are so inviting and I loved this show dearly. I heard somebody call this show Gen Z Akira, so do with that what you will. It's also a trigger anime, and we know how I feel about that studio already. It might be my favorite show on this list for personal reasons. I had to be left alone after finishing it for the first time. Mentioning the moon would bring tears to my eyes. Devilman Crybaby. Okay, there are a lot of edgy shows on this list, but this one is it's built different. Honestly, even way longer after. Like, there are side effects to watching this show. Devilman Crybaby was on my first ever anime recommendation list, and it's going in this one. It's insane, kind of gory, okay, actually very gory, and will genuinely leave you speechless. It's wild. The last thing on my mind while watching this anime is fun. The first thing on my mind while watching this anime is I need to call my therapist. I used to be like you, 4'11", weak-minded, in the fifth grade, and then I watched this show, and now I'm 5'1 with an existential crisis. We are not the same. This is all just to say, if you want a really good show that will leave you thinking, this is that. Oku. Oku is compelling, it's unpredictable, it's a drama that I finished in one sitting. You get sucked into this show immediately. I wanted to pick up the manga right after as well. It's a historical show about an alternate history where the Japanese Imperial court became ruled by women. And I don't know, it's really inspiring. I watched it after watching Apothecary Diaries, so if you liked that show, maybe try this. But if you want a show that will keep you hooked, watch Oku. Ranma One Half. Okay, honestly, I haven't seen much of the Netflix remake, but I have seen the 90s anime. Of course I've seen the 90s anime because, like, I had to. I always watched the commercial right before 
Pokemon played on like my VHS tapes on my DVD player. Did I just age myself? It's a pretty decent monster of the week type of show. Yeah, I don't know. The best way I could describe this show is like, think of it like a sitcom. I honestly might recommend Inuyasha more because it was made by the same person, but Inuyasha is not a Netflix anime original. I'm just saying Ranma one half walked so Inuyasha can run. Sashomaru walked so Itachi can run. You get where I'm going with this, right? Netflix is just churning out so much anime now, like it's no wonder why anime is becoming so much popular, it's like reaching so many people now. I already made a Dondodon video and that's also a Netflix anime original, like what? But those are my recommendations, please give this video a like, comment, subscribe, all of it, none of it, whatever you want. Please tell me if there are any Netflix anime originals I miss, ones that you can recommend me. Check out Netflix anime, check out Cozy Grove Camp Spirit. It's a good time, go do that. Or don't. I, ki I kinda want you to. It's not like I care or anything.